it is absolutely hilarious to me that conservatives in America insist that really it's them. They're the ones who are pro-life. In actuality, that applies to just a very narrow issue, abortion. But when it comes to protecting human beings, actually putting this belief that human life is valuable into practice, offering people universal health care, ending wars, they're not very pro-life. And they've really gone full mask off during this pandemic when almost immediately after it began, they recommended sacrificing grandma to the gods of capitalism in order to make sure that we don't hurt the economy. Now, you'd think that after all of this time, they'd learn that you don't get to choose between saving the economy and human lives because if human beings aren't flourishing, the economy, which needs human beings to function, also wouldn't flourish. But they've just disregarded any sense of uh, reason and logic. And now they, they want to pretend as if the pandemic is over when it's at the worst it's ever been. So you'll see how pro-life they are, you know, as they reject health care to people and financial assistance to people during a pandemic. And you're really going to see how pro-life these so-called pro-life conservatives are when uh, they are now actively encouraging people to just straight up defy lockdown orders, which are essential to save lives and stop hospitals from becoming overrun, which is literally happening right, right now. But Charlie Kirk uh, on his podcast, he encouraged his thousands, perhaps millions of viewers to go and defy lockdown orders. And if you don't, you're part of the problem. This is literally something that he thought was a good idea to say to an audience that's probably really large. Take a look. So before I get into uh, what tape do, you want to, do we have the tape from the John Fredericks to show all the fraud that's happening yeah, in Georgia? Got... Before we get into this, I just have to give like a 30 second question. Why is America still locked down? Why do we not have everything open completely and totally? No mask mandates. Make a decision as you see fit. If you're afraid of the virus, stay at home. This has been one of the most disappointing chapters in American history. How we have tolerated these lockdowns that are anti-scientific, anti-human. We have people committing suicide, drug addiction. And by the way, you try and go find accurate suicide data. Do you notice the states aren't publishing them? They're not publishing them because they're actually going to find out that more people, young people are committing suicide than dying from the Chinese, dying from the Chinese coronavirus. It is a disgrace and we're letting it, everyone's letting it happen. But we at Turning Point USA, we hosted the largest event of the entire year in Florida. We did an amazing job. So if you are not actively defying these state and city ordinances, you're part of the problem. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to John Fredericks, who goes to show that our election in Georgia um, is being corrupted with. Play tape. I love how that insane rant about COVID lockdowns was sandwiched between this idiotic conspiracy theory about how the election in Georgia was fraudulent when we literally just listened to the phone call where the president of the United States, which you support, is trying to get the secretary of state of Georgia to commit an act of election fraud. Like, it's hilarious to me. Words have no meanings. Fraud just means whatever they think uh, it hurts them. It's insane. Uh, but what he says here, it, it shows you that Charlie Kirk is either dumb or disingenuous. And I mistakenly said before that I think that even though he's wrong about everything, he at least is somewhat intelligent. Now I'm questioning that. I, I think he's probably stupid. Like, I think he's now getting into Dave Rubin territory. Like, that's that's where we're at. Uh, he says, why is America still locked down? Why do we not have everything open completely and totally? No mask mandates and make a decision as you see fit. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's because the pandemic is at the worst it's ever been. And this isn't about individual liberty. Not wearing a mask isn't about someone's personal decision. If I don't wear a mask... I could potentially infect you. If you don't wear a mask, you could potentially infect me. So it's not a personal decision to choose to not wear a mask. You're making a decision for someone else. You're choosing to spread your germs on other people during a pandemic. That's the point of masks, to prevent us from spreading, spreading our germs to other people. So this isn't about individual liberty. If you choose to not wear a mask, you are infringing on the liberty of other individuals, you fucking idiot. And he says, if you're afraid of the virus, stay home. Yeah, well, why don't you tell that to people who work with the public? who don't have the option to stay home if they don't stay if they uh, don't go to work then they can't pay rent they don't have the luxury of staying home so explain to them 
why if you're afraid of the virus just stay home if he said that but then also said you know what we have to give everyone two thousand dollars per month i'd say all right you know what that's fine i can understand your rationale but he's not saying that if you're paying people to stay home that's a different story but people cannot stay home so you're basically just inadvertently pushing for herd immunity without actually saying the words he also says that the lockdowns are anti-scientific they're anti-human and we have people committing suicide and drug addiction and i've heard this from conservatives before as well and this is a real concern of course these lockdowns are isolating prolonged lockdowns are not good for our mental health i agree with the concern there but he doesn't actually care because if he truly cared about people's mental health what would he be doing he'd be pushing someone like donald trump who he has influence over to offer more expansion of mental health coverage maybe we should make mental health care in america free maybe we should make health care in america free but you don't want to do that so you claim to care about mental health but really all i see is you just using that like you're exploiting a subject trying to pull on the heartstrings of people disingenuously so when you don't actually care about people's mental health if you care about mental health you would advocate for making healthcare free for making mental health care free even temporarily during a pandemic but you're not even fucking doing the bare minimum so spare me and the worst part of that entire video is when he says this if you are not actively defying these state and city ordinances you're part of the problem. So he is quite literally encouraging people to go out in public, pretend like the pandemic isn't a thing, not wear a mask, and this is going to get people killed. Charlie Kirk, by saying that, the people who listen to him and believe him and trust him, they're going to do this, and some of them are going to get sick and may die. So let me ask you this, Charlie Kirk. Are you going to take responsibility if any of your viewers die and get sick due to COVID-19? Are you going to admit that the blood is on your hands, someone who's supposedly pro-life, if this does in fact happen? Are you going to foot the bill for their burial services or their funerals if they take your advice and they defy lockdown because they have a misunderstanding of what liberty means because they're entitled? Are you going to take responsibility for that, Charlie Kirk? This is just unreal. Um, and... A lot of people oftentimes argue correctly so, I think, that conservatives, they never care about an issue unless it affects them, unless it hits close to home. You know, Meghan McCain had a baby and now she stresses the importance of maternity leave. Dick Cheney, you know, uh, he suddenly cared about gay marriage when he found out his daughter was a lesbian. So you think that, okay, well, Charlie Kirk maybe just has to know someone who was affected by COVID-19. Maybe he has to be affected by it personally. But he was. Look at this headline. Turning Point USA co-founder dies of COVID-19. Someone who co-founded the organization that he runs, someone who he knows personally, probably closely, has died, and he's still not taking it seriously. It's just, it's a joke to him. And if he does personally take it seriously, but he's still saying this because it's polit politically expedient and it's what's popular in right-wing circles, then... I don't know what to say. You're just you're just the scumbag. But either way, this is disgusting. But I mean, that's that's one way that the far right is, is responding to COVID-19. You have some individuals like Dave Rubin who are just conspiracy mongering and trying to raise doubts about the severity of it, particularly in states like California, which are experiencing really, really bad outbreaks. This is totally anecdotal, but I, you know, I keep seeing that they're saying like something like uh, all... Uh, not, not all of them, but we're seeing like, oh, 90% of the hospital beds in, uh, in California are overtaken. SoCal and LA, all the hospital beds are overtaken. There's two hospitals that I live about 10 minutes between, and I drove by both yesterday, and they're pretty much empty. I did not go in and check every bed, so I'm just telling you what I can see on the outside, which are pretty much empty parking lots and the lines for COVID testing that are completely empty and everything else. So it's just like, what's going on here? What's going on here? I don't know. I'm just... I'm just asking you the questions. See, I can't see evidence that this is as severe as I'm told it is. So I doubt that it's really that serious at all. And look, don't get mad at me. I'm just asking questions. I know exactly how my far right audience will interpret what I'm saying. I know what I'm doing, but I'm just asking questions. It's not that big of a deal. Dave Rubin is an absolute fucking clown. And I know that he doesn't believe what he's saying. He knows that... By saying that, you look like you're a rebel. You look like you're standing up for liberty. But in actuality, you're a fucking fraud. Downplaying the severity of COVID-19. Conspiracy mongering. And uh, 
I want to share this tweet that Lauren Steiner, an activist on Twitter, shared that really puts things into perspective. Quote, the LA County EMS has directed ambulance crews not to transport patients with little chance of survival to hospitals and to conserve the use of oxygen. That's what's happening right now. But I can't see lots of cars in the parking lots of hospitals, so it must not be real. It must not be as severe as people are telling me it is, as the numbers indicate. Additionally, they are trying to discharge COVID patients and all patients as quickly as possible because they're reaching full capacity if they haven't already reached it. But Dave Rubin, he has to see the cars. He drove by like two hospitals, guys. So must not be as severe as he says it is. We've only had, what, more than 350,000 deaths in America? What is it going to take? 500,000? 700,000? A million? By then, will it be a serious enough illness for you? I mean, what is it going to take? And the answer is, uh, there is no line. Like, it doesn't matter what threshold we cross. We could lose a million Americans, and they're still going to say the same fucking thing because they have a political agenda. And apparently, now, uh, a pandemic is a political issue. In reality, like, COVID-19 doesn't have a party affiliation. It doesn't care if you're a Republican. It doesn't care if you're a Democrat. It is a virus and it is infecting people. So whether you take it seriously or not will determine if you're affected or if you're going to infect other people or if other people will infect you. And so we need people to take it seriously. We need them to stay home. We need them to know how bad it is in certain states. But you have far-right lunatics who are trying to contradict that. And it's just, it, it's deeply dangerous. And I don't know how these goons sleep at night, but um, you know, you can only have so much money profit off of the misinformation that you spread. But I mean, you still got to look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day. And I want to think that they have trouble sleeping. I want to think that they feel bad about the things that they say and do. But I just, I think that these are just soulless ghouls who don't care.